Genomes are just the collection of all the DNA in a human. There's 22 autosomes and an X or a Y in each of us, and we get that set twice, one from mother, one from father. And the genome refers to one complete set of those. When you pass on genetic information to your children, it's rearranged. So you get rearranged pieces that are mixtures of what your mother and your father had. And so our grant was all about trying to understand how the haplotypes, that is the strings of DNA letters in humans, behave through generations. What you're trying to do is unpick a very complicated problem. The first five years of the grant was really quite computationally and methodologically oriented. The second five years is much more experimental, and so the way in which we're doing things has changed quite dramatically. We've now changed to generate a lot of our own data, and we've chosen to do it in two model organisms, the fruit fly and Arabidopsis, a little plant. The basic aim of the exercise is to try and understand using DNA sequences in these two model organisms as though we have perfect information about a human, except we have perfect information about flies and the DNA of plants, and we're going to use that as the input into studying the way in which phenotypes work in plants and flies. You can see um, those two, for example, how different they are. They were germinated exactly at the same time. They were grown under exactly the same conditions in, in the growth chambers. Um, and you can see, I mean, one is huge, one is tiny. Um, the shape of the leaves is very, very different. It tells us that there is a lot of diversity in the collection we're working on. Diversity can mean what we call phenotypic diversity, which is the diversity that translates into the shape of the plant, for example, the morphology of the plant, um, its, its physical appearance. The phenotypes we're looking at in plant were things to do with flowering time, which is one of the most important aspects, of course, of what a plant does. And what we're interested in fly is things to do with aging. The phenotype is aging, and we're going to see how aging works in different conditions. We can only look at a few phenotypes in each organism, and those will translate into the human setting into disease. So we can learn what happens by doing it in plants and flies, where we can get data much more easily. And then if we are successful at this, and we have some chance of doing this, we're going to exploit the connections with the medical school to use the methods we've developed in these model organisms uh, in humans. I think in terms of human disease, I think the thing we're trying to get at, the general principle, general question about what is it that really produces the connection between genotype and phenotype is crucial. The fun behind it is just trying to understand what the biology is doing from these incredibly complicated data that we generate. Uh, it may be that it's only complicated because we don't know much yet. Maybe the whole thing will turn out to be dead easy. Doubtful, but maybe.